Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, the best game Cox podcast on the internet. Today is Wednesday, October the 20th, 2021. Today's show, I give my full takeaways from Shane Beamer's Tuesday press conference as the big news today. Game Cox quarterback Luke Doty will be out the rest of the 2021 football season as he has surgery on his foot. Therefore, putting Zeb Noland as the Gamecock starter moving forward throughout the rest of this season. Guys, I'll give my full thoughts. What that means for South Carolina as they go through their last five games of this season. Also, guys, of course, it is Wednesday. We're talking gambling. Best bet for South Carolina, Texas A&M, as well as week eight of our SEC gambling picks. And what a slate of games we've got for you guys this week, guys. And what a show we've got for you here today, here on a Wednesday. And it's all brought to you by our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, Upstate Movers Group, superior moving service. They bring care and attention the companies can't offer because they're just too busy maintaining trucks and profiting off of them instead of focusing on service. Guys, service is what separates Upstate Movers Group from the competition. They're not a trucking company. They're a moving services company, and they're also employee-owned co-op. Their movers are paid twice the industry average, and everyone on the crew is invested in your success. They have dedicated professional crew members, and they also offer black glove service. They offer end-to-end packing services, custom crating and packaging special items, and cleaning services as well. They're founded by Greenville Natives and University of South Carolina alumni guys, so a Gamecock-owned small business. They also offer 20 years of project management moving experience, and they can offer logistics and solutions that traditional moving companies simply do not have the skills for. Guys, whether in the upstate or across the state of South Carolina, if you have any moving needs in 2021, be sure to check out our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. You can find them on social media at Upstate Movers Group, of course, if you have any other questions, go to their website, upstatemoversgroup.com. That's upstatemoversgroup.com. Be sure to check them out and tell them Chris from the Spurs Up Show sent you. Let's get it. Boys and girls, happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Chris Phillips, the Spurs Up show as always. Appreciate you guys tuning in. We have got a packed show here for you on this Wednesday. And again, guys, I thank you all so much for tuning in. And I hope this show finds you well, no matter where you are, what you're doing, whether you're on the commute, you're in the office, you're on the job, you've got the day off, maybe you're in class, whatever it is, folks. Again, thank you all so much for tuning in. We have got a lot, and I mean a lot, to get into here on a Wednesday. Guys, before we do, just a quick reminder, of course, it is Wednesday, which means we're a couple of days away from kickoff this Saturday. If you are not going to be in College Station, and especially if you're an upstate Gamecock, We will be at the Carolina Ale House downtown Greenville location yet again for our watch party this Saturday as the Gamecocks take on the Texas A&M Aggies. Guys, would love to see you out there. Of course, doors open at 11. Yours truly will get out there around 5 or 5.30 with kickoff being at 7 30. We've also teamed up with the Greenville Gamecock Club. Guys, going to be a really, really good time. If you recall the watch party we threw for the East Carolina game way back in early September, going to be very similar to that. So again, a fantastic venue, a great location. We had an incredible turnout the last time we were up there, and I would love to see all those upstate Gamecocks out and about yet again. Again, guys, like I said, going to be a really, really good time. Let's paint Greenville Garnet. Be sure to come out, like I said, our good friends at Carolina Ale House in downtown Town Greenville. Also, make sure you mention you're with TSUS. They're going to give you 10% off your entire order. That includes food, drink, everything, guys. 10% off and appreciate the fine folks over at Carolina Ale House for taking care of our people. But again, this Saturday, the Upstate Gamecocks. I want to see all you guys out there. We're partnering with the Greenville Gamecock Club and, of course, our friends at Carolina Ale House for that watch party at the downtown Greenville location 
as we watch the Gamecocks take on Texas A&M. So, again, guys, we'd love to see you out there. Be sure to come out. Doors open at 11, kickoffs at 7.30. And be sure to follow us on social media for all of the details you need for that. So, again, guys, would love to see you out there. Hey, let's go ahead and dive into it, guys, because there's a lot to get into, and especially a big note to start with. Of course, guys, normally on the Wednesday shows, we are talking Shane Beamer's Tuesday press conferences. Of course, he speaks to the media each and every single Tuesday ahead of kickoff that upcoming weekend. And what a bombshell that was dropped in Shane Beaver's presser as we officially find out. As I speculated, by the way, all this week, as Alex McGrath and I speculated with Luke Doty, did he need surgery? What was his status going to be for the rest of the season? Well, it comes out Luke Doty will officially have surgery on his foot, the foot that had been bothering him in the preseason, obviously all throughout the season. He will have surgery on that foot, and Luke Doty will be out for the remainder of the 2021 football season, which means... It's officially Zeb season. Zeb Nolan will take over. Not only will he start this Saturday in College Station, but Zeb Nolan, at least right now, it seems, will be your starting quarterback moving forward and throughout the duration of the rest of this season. Again, guys, I'll say this in regards to Luke Doty and the entire quarterback conversation, by the way, because, again, it never fails for some reason. I think there are people out there that believe that I am biased for some reason. I'm like a Luke Doty homer, and I want Luke Doty to start, and I dislike Zeb Nolan, and I dislike Jason Brown and all that. Let me again make something very clear. I do not care who the starting quarterback is. Let me say that one more time. I do not care who the starting quarterback is. Play the guy that gives you the best opportunity to win football games. Winning football games takes precedent over everything else. I like winning more than I like any particular player, coach, whoever it might be, right? Winning is better than all of that. However, with that being said, the reason why it is so disappointing for yours truly is, you know, we spent months obviously breaking this thing down and we saw Luke Doty in the spring game. And we had all these high hopes and aspirations and, you know, selfishly, yes, guys, I'll tell you this. I am so ready for South Carolina to find their QB one again, to find not necessarily the skill level of a Connor Shaw. You know, I don't want to compare anybody to a Connor Shaw, but to truly find that QB one again, that guy that you can depend on and cling to week after week after week. And so, yes, I was pulling for Luke Doty to evolve and grow into that player. Who wasn't, right? But I will say this. I'm happy that we do not have to see Luke Doty trot out there anymore at less than 100%. You know, we said it all throughout the week. If he needed the surgery, go ahead and get it. Let Zeb Nolan navigate this thing. You're four and three, whatever. I mean, guys, the reality is this. You're in year one. You could lose the rest of the games the way out, and nobody's getting fired. It's not going to be considered some failure of a season. It's year one of Shane Beamer. Roller coaster ride, topsy-turvy. It is what it is. It is a damn shame, I'll say that that we really, I, I don't believe, got to see the best version of Luke Doty. And, um, you know, again, all you can hope for is he's going to heal up, get healthy, and, you know, Shane, you're making it sound like he will be ready for spring ball. But I said on the Daily Crow yesterday, I had somebody reach out to me about this, and, and they thought that I was I was trashing Zeb Nolan and was, was trying to poke here and there, whatever, when I said, you know, fans are finally going to get what they want with Zeb Nolan getting the nod and starting throughout the rest of this season. Here's what I meant by that. Again, that's no knock on Zeb Nolan. I don't dislike Zeb Nolan. Zeb Nolan, for what it's worth, has done a pretty damn good job when he's come in. Hey, he's basically undefeated right now, I guess, out, without, you know, outside of the Georgia game, which he started, which would be an L in his record. Um, you know, he's won some football games for you, bottom line. EIU, ECU, he, he won the Vandy game. So three of the four victories that you have are at least partially, if not all the way, thanks to Zeb Nolan. But call it for what it is, it, it just it got really old this season. The Luke Doty slander week after week after week after week after week. And people calling for Zeb Nolan to take his job, even when it was obvious that a 110% Luke Doty is the best option for this football team, no questions asked. So, hey, I'm excited to see Zeb Nolan and what he does. And like I said, fans are going to get exactly what they asked for now. 
whether that's Zeb Nolan is a miracle worker and the Gamecocks finish out 5-0, and or whether Zeb Nolan is who many of us think he is, and this offense looks even worse than it did with number four in the center. Again, I'm not pulling for that, not hoping for that, but I am very curious and intrigued to see what Zeb Nolan can bring to this football team. Again, does anyone else get a look? Does Jason Brown? Does Colton Gothier? I don't tend to think so, but we know now for certain there will be no debate of whether Luke Doty should play, should he not, you know, what percentage is he at? And I'm honestly so happy for that. That's not a talking point for us anymore. I think it is very obvious that Luke Doty's original injury was much closer to the original report that was reported by our good friend Mike Yuva. I think was much more serious than just a sprain, if you will. And uh, that's not me calling out Shane Beamer or any coaches, but the guy never looked like himself. And it's something where, He needs surgery. So obviously, it was pretty serious. But now fans will get exactly what they've been clamoring for for the last five or six weeks. Zeb Nolan will get the nod. He will command this football team throughout the rest of the season, and we will see what happens. I'm excited for Zeb. I like Zeb. I think it's a great story. And I'll even go this far. Does the insertion of Zeb Nolan now for certain Does it really change my projections, my original projections for the last five games of the season? Not necessarily, not a ton, Um, but I will say this. I I am still someone that's not getting carried away by what we saw in the one drive against Vanderbilt. I think Zeb Nolan has obvious limitations. What I'm most intrigued about is to see how much different will this offense look with Zeb Nolan under center? Because again, Even with Luke Doty not being 100%, at least he had somewhat of a threat to get outside the pocket. Zeb Nolan has none of that. And the Gamecocks cannot run the football. That is a fact now. You know, when he was last starting, that was something where, well, maybe it's just early season jitters. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. No, we're we're through seven weeks, guys. You can't run the football. That's just a fact of this football team this year. So I think with Zeb Nolan, or maybe he gives you a little bit more something in the passing game, you might need to be a football team that throws it 35, 40, 45 times a game. You might need to be that because of what Zeb Nolan's skill set is and honestly just what the strengths and weaknesses are of your offensive football team. So how much different does this offense look? What can Zeb Nolan realistically give you in your last four SEC games plus Clemson? I'll be very intrigued to see. But again, excited for Zeb Nolan. Zeb-tober continues. But yes, fans will get exactly what they've been asking for. And we'll see if that pays off. And we'll see if that was, you know, maybe Zeb Nolan will make us all look silly and say, you know what, he should have been playing the entire time. But uh, I think there's still serious limitations with what number eight can give you. I think there's a reason Zeb Nolan came to South Carolina and hung up the cleats. And, um, you know, but again, we'll see if his leadership qualities and maybe his, his, his knowledge of the offense and his, his throwing ability, maybe it'll be something that helps advance this offense just slightly. But again, the, the, the main takeaway is this, Luke Doty's getting healthy, and, and that's the biggest positive. You know, it's like we said earlier this week, I just want Luke Doty to be healthy. I don't want to hear about he's 90%, 95%. He's getting closer to 100%. If he's not 100%, do not play him the rest of the season. And if he needs the surgery, just go ahead and get it. Stop delaying the inevitable. Stop putting him out there in a compromising situation. So I'm glad they're taking care of it. All those people that thought that uh, Shane Beamer was naming Zeb Nolan the starter just because, and, you know, Luke Doty's not really hurt. Well, you look pretty stupid, don't you? You look pretty silly. So uh, Luke Doty, best, you know, best wishes to him. Hope for a speedy recovery and, you know, glad he's going to be healthy. For those insinuating that Luke Doty might hit the transfer portal or he's plays, played his last down at South Carolina, I, I don't tend to believe that. I, I think Luke Doty, the, the quarterback competition, is going to be wide open in the spring with he, Braden Davis, and Colton Gauthier getting an opportunity to win that job. Of course, Zeb Dolan, this is his last year, his final year of eligibility, so he will not be in the mix. Uh, so I expect Luke Doty to be back and fighting for that starting job and May the best man win. Again, will South kind of what will the quarterback you know, position look like in the spring and next season? Will, will Shane Beamer go to the transport? Who knows? But, uh, yeah, well wishes to Luke Doty, his speedy recovery, and now the, the Zeb Nolan era, for at least for the final part of the season, really begins. So what can Zeb Nolan give you? Again, I just wanted to make that very clear, though. I, I am not shitting on Zeb Nolan. I don't dislike Zeb Nolan. I think Zeb Nolan can actually do some pretty nice things for you in the passing game. You saw that against Vandy. But 
Let's also keep in mind and keep in perspective, he has his limitations too. So again, I would just say this to Gamecock fans. Just don't set unrealistic expectations for this dude going into Texas A&M and really for the rest of this 2021 season because I think you'll be sorely disappointed. Um, but hey, who knows? Who knows? Maybe Zeb Noel, maybe the story will, will continue on. And hey, if he can get this team to a bowl game somehow, some way, um, you know, imagine the Disney movie they'll make. When they, talk, when they talk about the Zeb Nolan. The other big takeaway from Shane Beamer's Tuesday presser, and this was a really interesting quote, um, really interesting quote. When Shane Beamer talking about offensive football and, and play calling and all that good stuff, and, you know, I, I think people on social media don't really know how to sense sarcasm necessarily, but Shane Beamer saying this in regards to the play calling, he said, quote, I don't know what the message boards are saying, but I'm sure they're nuclear about bad play calling. Well, I don't know what play calls are bad on Saturday. So help me out. And of course, you know, we post that on social media and, and folks lost their minds in the comments. I thought it was personally pretty funny. And if you watch the presser and I think you understand his context and kind of why he's saying it and what, you know, why he's saying it and what he's saying, I think you get a good laugh out of it too. He also said, quote, it's seven weeks in and we got to be better on offense. We've got to have some consistency at quarterback. The play calling didn't force us to have four turnovers and holding penalties. And that, to me, that's the quote that almost stands out more than anything. It's like, it's what we've been saying for weeks, guys. It's not just play calling. Has play calling been perfect? Not necessarily. But it's not just play calling, guys. You know, they're they're not calling plays for guys to fumble. They're not calling plays for guys to make penalties. I mean, again, y'all want to blame the coaches, blame the coaches, blame the coaches. Do the players get any accountability whatsoever? Again, Shane Beamer, Marcus Satterfield, Clayton White, Pete Limbo, they're football coaches. They're not miracle workers. These are the same players that were slap dicks under Will Muschamp. You know, a lot of them. These are the same players that made those same mistakes under the previous coaching staff. So, again, I'm not saying don't hold the guys accountable that are making a lot of money to be charge of this thing. But also just keep in mind that, again, you know, any of you out there that have kids or you're in a relationship or you've ever been in any type of leadership position, I'm sure you've been in positions where you told someone to do something or you instructed someone or you taught someone how to operate a certain way, and they didn't do it. And they didn't do it, right? Is it because you're a bad teacher? Is it because you're a bad husband? You're a bad wife? You're a bad boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Is it, is it your fault? Or at some point, it is, is it up to that person to take on the responsibility, to be accountable, to have self-discipline, and get the job done and do whatever they were instructed and told? I mean, again, like I said, these guys are making a lot of money to coach football. Hold them accountable. But the point Shane Beamer, I think, is making, and again, I think he's being really nice about it, but I'm sure if he could, he would say, hey, we're coaching our asses off, man. We're coaching our asses off to get the most out of these players. We ain't teaching them to fumble. We ain't teaching them to do, to do stupid things and make stupid penalties. I mean, there's only so much you can do, man. There's only so much, you know, running the stadium steps you can do. You can't run the losing out of somebody. You can't do it, okay? It's got to come from within the player, the want to, the self-discipline, the give a damn to execute and to not make those foolish mistakes and commit those stupid penalties. So let's share the blame. Let, let's not just put it all on the coaching staff. This is a group effort. This is a group effort. Hey, if this problem's happening in four or five years, then, hey, we'll probably put a little bit more of the emphasis on the coaching staff because it's like, you know what? You've gone out and gotten players who were supposed to be guys who wouldn't do things like that. So what are you teaching? What are you instructing that is not clicking with these young men? But right now, guys, in year one, with Will Muschamp's leftovers, with Will Muschamp's mess he left, I mean, there's only so much these guys can do. You know, there's only so much they can do. So let's just all try to keep that in mind when we're going after Shane Beamer or Satterfield's play calling or whoever it might be. Let's keep that perspective in mind. So again, some really interesting comments from Shane Beamer. Uh, like I said, the lead storyline, Luke Doty being out for the season. And Zeb Noland will take over. Let me, let me reemphasize. I'm excited for Zeb Noland. I am. I'm excited. I'm excited to see the story play out. Um, 
you know, I, I think I'm just more disappointed than anything that we did not ever get the opportunity to truly see Luke Doty at 100%. And that, that, that's unfortunate because, I, you know, the, I think the best version, I think this offense had potential to be successful if he would have been at 100%. But the fact of the matter is, is this, he just never was. He, he was a shell of himself the entire season. I commend, by the way, Luke Doty for trying to battle through it and be a warrior, but he was never his normal self. And that showed. Again, people talk about his accuracy issues and these issues. Well, guys, you have that bum foot. It's your plant foot. It's your, it's, it's your drive leg, if you will. You're going to compensate in other areas. I'm not surprised he had the issues he had. So, hey, glad Luke Doty is taking care of his health. Go get the surgery. Go rehab. Go get healthy. Get back to form. And we'll see you in the spring. And, again, we'll let Colonel Zebulia man this thing the rest of the way out. So, again, excited to watch Zeb Nolan spin it. And, uh, just simply hoping for the best. All right, it is Wednesday, guys. Let's talk gambling on the note of South Carolina, Texas A&M. I will lock in my best bet as the Gamecocks travel to College Station looking for back-to-back SEC wins and their first ever win in program history over the Aggies. South Carolina in this one opened up as a 19-point underdog. That line has since jumped. Gamecocks are plus 21 on the road. The over-under set at 45 in this ball game. Um Guys, again, not a ton of line movement this week. Again, AM opening up as a 19 point favorite, jumping to 21. The totals kind of floated right around 45 all week. Long story short, guys, like I told you, I have no confidence going in this game. Uh, and now you lose Luke Doty. I, I have no confidence going in this game. You've never beaten Texas AM. The last two meetings have been extremely ugly. You know, Texas AM has been a real mystery this season with how they started the year and they lost their quarterback. And then all of a sudden, of course, as we know, guys, a couple of weeks ago, the Aggies go, go out there and upset number one ranked, you know, Alabama. And, you know, they beat Mizzou last week. And does it, have they turned a corner? Are they, are they on the up and up? What does it really mean? How good is A&M really? Are they really the team that beat Alabama? I don't know. But what I know is this, A&M is light years ahead of South Carolina. Jimbo Fisher's done a really, really good job in building that program, building up talent all over the field. We're talking line of scrimmage, the skill positions, everywhere. A&M top to bottom is a much better football team than you are. And before the season started, I really did look, I think I ranked this game as your second second or third toughest game on the 2021 schedule. Uh, it just seems like the matchup is never good for South Carolina in this football game. And like I said, guys, the last two meetings, you've lost by a combined score. And a 48-3 to last year, and then I believe 38-3 to the year prior. So what is that, 86-2? to Yeah, 86-6, to you've lost the last two meetings combined score. Um, I, I expect the Gamecocks to put up more of a fight than that. And again, I'm not trying to spoil my score prediction for Friday, but uh, I, again, guys, I have no confidence in this one. You know, you just, you just you're coming off a of beating Vanderbilt by a point. A and M has been rolling. I, 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 you know, I know the line. Some of you may have felt it was sort of big when it opened. I, I don't think so. I think the line's running the money. And again, if, I, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put money on this one, if I got to give a best bet, I the total to me 45 is just so low, but. I could see the Gamecocks struggling mightily offensively. I think you've got to roll with the Aggies in the points, guys. I think you've got to go AM minus 21. If you got it at 18 or 19, good for you. I think that's a great pick. Uh, but AM minus 21 to me, that's the way to go. That's the only way you can go in this one. South Carolina, just simply put, guys, uh, has issues, has deficiencies. You know, the defense will fight to keep them in it. But Zeb Nolan at quarterback, you'll be extremely one dimensional offensively in College Station at night as well, by the way. Um, I don't see it being a very fun night for South Carolina. So again, I've got A&M covering the 21, not saying they cover it by a lot, but to me, that's the only side to play. I, I, I just, I don't see this being a scenario in which the Gamecocks go into college station and like overachieve and, and, and play like something they are not. Um, A&M, ha A&M has their own problems as well. They have their own issues, but they are so far ahead of South Carolina. It's not even funny. So again, for that reason, Aggies minus 21, my best bet for when Sal kind of travels to College Station to take on AM on Saturday night. All right, let's move to SEC gambling picks, guys. And hey, I actually had a winning week last week. Barely. But you know what? A winning week is a winning week. We went four and three last week, which puts us at 32 and 30 overall. The best bet now, by the way, sits at three and four after I lost my ass on picking the Gamecocks to cover 18 points against 
Vandy, but again, four and three in the SEC gambling picks last week, 32 and 30 overall, guys. And again, we got a couple of games, not that many, just three games. But you know what? I'm feeling three and I'm feeling four and with the best bet, guys. I'm feeling a big weekend. So, guys, before we get into that, let me tell you about our friends over at Prize Picks. I am addicted to the Prize Picks app, folks. Again, sign up for Prize Picks at a prizepicks.com and or go download the app. All of our users will receive a 100% Instant deposit match up to $100 when you sign up with the promo code TSUS. Guys, what is Prize Picks? Prize Picks is the simplest fantasy game on the market focused around prop total entries. It's simple. Here's what you do you pick two to five players, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry, guys. There's no sharks, optimizers, or mass multi entries. It's just you against the prediction. Prize Picks allows mixed sports entries as well. Hey, NBA's back. So you can take the over on LeBron parlayed with the under on Mahomes, parlayed with the over on Josh Van. You can mix and match with sports. And by the way, you just heard me say it, they have college football, which literally no other site, no other book, nowhere else has prop plays on college football. That's what makes this thing so damn fun, guys. Prize Picks has a slick, easy-to-use mobile app, both in the App Store and Google Play. They're also rated 4.8 stars in the App Store with rave reviews again y'all I-, I am addicted to prize picks love playing it each and every single week you guys have probably seen uh, our prize picks plays of the day each and every single saturday and i have won a lot of money and i know many of you have as well have won a ton of money so i know you're all out there playing spreads you're playing over unders play your play, do yourself a favor play some props as well because the money is there to be made again that's our friends over at prize picks download their app and or goes to go to prizepicks.com. And when you sign up, use the promo code TSUS at sign up. That's TSUS at sign up to receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Again, guys, prizepicks.com and or the prize picks app. Go check them out today and let's break the bookie yet again this week. All right, let's get into the SEC gambling picks, guys. We'll start first. Ole Miss and LSU, and what a week for LSU it's been as Ed Orgeron will not return as the head coach in 2022. Ole Miss in this one, a nine-point favorite. The over set at 76 and a half. Turmoil, turmoil, turmoil surrounding LSU. I loved the Tigers last week, plus 11, and of course, they won outright. I'm on the other side this weekend. Ole Miss coming off that big win against Tennessee. Lane Kiffin, what he's doing, a lot of speculation about, oh, well, Lane Kiffin jumped LSU. Well, if he wants that job, He needs to keep winning, and that's exactly what Ole Miss will do. Give me the Rebels to cover that nine-point spread against the Bayou Bengals. Guys, Vanderbilt against Mississippi State. Mississippi State, a a 20-and-a-half-point favorite. The over-under set at 51. This is one that's really tough because I I know last week South Carolina Vandy was the two worst teams in the SEC. This one is probably the worst team and the second-worst team or third-worst team in the SEC because Mississippi State ain't very good either. Um You know, I don't like the spread. I could see Vandy doing something silly and making this a closer game than it should be. Love the under, though. The under 51. You don't even know if Ken Seals is going to play for Vanderbilt. Mississippi State, I know it's crazy to take the under in a Mike Leach game, but they haven't been scoring like normal. Give me the under 51. I think this is a weird football game in Asheville. Finally, Alabama against Tennessee. Bama is a 25 and a half point favorite of the Volunteers. The over under. Set at 67. Guys, if you think Carolina Clemson's an ugly rivalry right now, Alabama, Tennessee, that ain't been a rivalry in 15 years. So I don't expect it to be again this year. I'm not touching the line because 25 and a half is so much. I would not bet on Tennessee plus 25 and a half because, like I've told you guys before, nobody, and I mean nobody, has gotten rich betting against Alabama. Love the over, though. I think points will be scored on both sides. The over 67 my play in that ball game. So again, guys, hey, that's going to do it all for me. SEC gambling picks are locked in. Best bet, hammer the Aggies minus 21. I think they get a big dub over South Carolina. Like I said, I'll give my official prediction on Friday. I'm not locked in in regards to what the score is going to be, but the best bet, I, I just I just can't go against Texas a and guys. I, I think they're they're so far ahead of South Carolina. And, you know, with Zeb Nolan taking over the range, I, you know, I love the story. I like Zeb. Maybe he provides a spark in the passing game, but realistically, as I told y'all before, he's a little bit of Colin Hill 2.0, and South Carolina will be one-dimensional, and that is not a recipe for success 
for what Zeb Nolan and this offense can do. And your defense is only going to be able to hold on for so long. So A&M minus 21, my pick. Um, also, again, well wishes, speedy recovery to Luke Doty. And hey, Zeb Tober is here to stay. Zeb season for the holiday season. Let's get those t-shirts printed. Guys, again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Appreciate your love and support, guys. Hey, we're live at 10 Roof, by the way, tonight, 5 to 7 in the Vista. Would love to have you come out. And again, quick reminder, Carolina Ale House on Saturday, downtown Greenville, that watch party. Would love to see you guys out there. But again, folks, I'm out. Appreciate you all tuning in. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.